Ladies and gentlemen, the Shrek Gaming Silicon video, I want to discuss the AMD Zen processors. So I did touch on some of this stuff yesterday, but there's been a bucket load more stuff um, that was announced after I actually finished recording. And then I updated the article, but obviously at that point the video had already uploaded and with export times and all of that jazz, just wasn't really feasible to do another video because I had to be up ridiculously early this morning. But I want to discuss it in video now with you because it's pretty darn exciting. So I'll point to yesterday's article if you do want to check it out um, with the slides and all of that stuff. But the bottom headline for you is that Zen is going to improve um, over AMD's previous generation processors by at least 40% IPC. And it's going to have a much, much better performance per watt, uh, per watt. And this is going to be released in 2016. In 2017, AMD are also planning to release Zen Plus. Plus, obviously, would be the kind of the improved shiny version, and this is going to continue to have even better performance and obviously better watt as well. So let's get into the nitty gritty and actually talk about some specifications and some shiny stuff, shall we? That seems like a good idea to me. Now, obvious stuff out of the way, it will be using DDR4. Um, I don't think many of us are surprised with that, but it's good to hear confirmation. Also, reiterating some stuff that we discussed yesterday, it will be handling simultaneous multi-threading. It's going to be very Intel-like in its design scheme. We've gone over this a lot when it comes to leaked um, documents, so I don't want to go over it too much again. But effectively, we're going to be looking at much, much better integer performance, better floating point performance as well. Basically, they've redesigned the entire CPU box. And it's a good thing. We're going to be getting much better single thread performance, but with the way they're handling SMT as well, which I realize I've not actually gone in depth into SMT previously. Probably going to be a subject for the simplified maybe in the future. I think that would be a good idea actually. But anyway, moving on. Um, this will mean, of course, a much better performance for applications which are multi-threaded, even games now, of course. And overall... I think we're going to be a lot happier with this processor. In addition to that, Zen is also going to feature a high bandwidth for low latency cache system. Now, cache performance was a problem when it came to Bulldozer, and they want to fix this. AMD know the problems they've had, and to be quite, quite honest with you, they don't want to continuously have failures in the CPU uh, marketplace. Now, that's not to say that Bulldozer was a terrible processor. It really wasn't. You know, despite the fact that some people were saying that it couldn't, you know, calculate 1 plus 1, it actually wasn't a bad processor as a whole when multi-threading was concerned. It was really the single-thread performance which kind of let it down. But for cheaper systems or for cheap multimedia rigs, it was actually quite effective. So, what about AMD and their 40%? Well, what they want to do is actually start focusing on performance per clock. Now, I'm sure most of you are aware what IPC is, instructions per clock, performance per clock, whatever the hell you want to call it, per clock. But it basically means how many instructions, how much data, how much stuff a processor can do per clock speed. So, basically, in a very... Ignoring multi-threading, ignoring multiple cores, ignoring any of that stuff just for a second, and ignoring things such as cache performance, and I know that these things are very critical and crucial, but just for the, to take them off the plate for a moment, and just from a very simple point of view, if you have a processor that's clocked at 100 megahertz, and it can handle 100 instructions, so 100 megahertz and it handles 100 instructions per megahertz okay now you've got two options let's assume that you have a processor you increase that clock speed to 125 megahertz linearly if it's still handling the same amount of instructions per clock it will still be 125 um, it will be 125 uh, instructions now won't it on the other hand you can improve the IPC so you're still clocked at 100 megahertz but the difference is, get ready for it, 
your, that's right, it's going to handle 125 instructions per clock, and that's a really simplified, ridiculously simplified version of how this actually works. So what Zen is planning to do is actually improve it over 40% per IPC. Now, that's quite interesting, because if that's true, if that claim is actually backed up when I put this sucker on the benchmark rig and it actually does that, that will in theory be faster than Intel's offerings at the time, in theory. But the biggest the biggest thing is it will actually be the at least probably the single biggest core boost from a processor making company that I can think of. Maybe the odd one here and there, maybe back in the day of the of the original Athlon. Maybe. Maybe. I'm not sure I'd have to check that out. My memory's a bit fuzzy from that era, maybe. Uh, when AMD transitioned from the K62 slash K63 to the Athlons, possibly the Athlon 64, but let's just go with this. It, it's pretty impressive and it's it's quite nice. Now, a little bit shiny, but not quite as shiny, is that they will also be moving towards uh, a series APUs. Now, personally, I'll just be totally honest. At the moment, I don't give a crap about APUs. I don't find them that interesting. I don't find them uh, that shiny. I just think they're like, eh, because they're not powerful enough at the moment. But in the future, eventually, of course, this will change. Um, the APUs, however, the cool thing with this, they will be utilizing DDR4. In fact, they'll be utilizing the same platform, still AM4, which is cool. This is... This is actually what we want because it means easy compatibility between hardware parts. So, theoretically, Zen may go against Canon Lake, which is a shrink of uh, Skylake. I don't know what's going to be the fastest processor. In theory, their processors will be faster than Skylake, but whether they're going to be faster than Canon Lake, I don't know. What I'm kind of hoping is that they're either the same speed, maybe slightly slower, maybe slightly faster, but they're cheaper. Or maybe they're slightly slower in single in uh, single thread performance, but maybe they've got more processor cores, or what have you. That'd be kind of cool. I would really love it if all of their processors just had HT on, or hyperthreading, or SMT, or whatever they end up bloody calling it as a standard, though, wouldn't you? Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.